Hi, in this video I will be demonstrating how to install Ubuntu Desktop 24.04 LTS in VirtualBox on a Windows 11 host operating system. If you do not have VirtualBox already installed, you will need to go to the VirtualBox website. I will have the link in the description, or you can type in the link here. Once you are on this page, you will need to click the download button here. From this screen, you'll need to select the correct host that you are installing VirtualBox on. In this example, we'll be using Windows. Once you click that, there will be an executable file that you'll need to double click and follow the prompts. Next, you'll need to go to the Ubuntu website, and I'll have the link to that website in the description, or you can follow the link here. Once on this screen, you will need to go locate products and here you'll see Ubuntu desktop. So go ahead and click that. And next you'll need to click download Ubuntu desktop and this will be the latest version. And in our case, that is 24.04. .04. So click download and that will be the ISO file that we'll be using in this example. Once those items are installed, then we could go ahead and open up Oracle's virtual box. This is the screen that you should see when you open up Oracle's virtual box. To create your virtual machine, you'll go ahead and click on new, and then you can name the machine whatever you want. In this case, I will name it example VM. And you can also change the location of where your virtual machine is located. For now, I will leave that on default. In the ISO image field, this is where we'll need to select the ISO file that we downloaded from Ubuntu. So go ahead and click on the drop down and go to other and you should see your Ubuntu ISO file located in your downloads folder. So go ahead and select that and it'll fill in the rest. and meeting the minimum requirements from your operating system. So go ahead and click next. And I'll be leaving this default, but if you want to assign more storage, then you may do that. And we'll leave this as default as listed. So here's a summary screen. If everything looks good, then you can go ahead and hit finish. But if something looks wrong, then you this is the chance to go back and fix it. So there's our virtual machine. So one thing I like to do before spinning up this machine, I like to go into the settings and going to display and allocating the max amount of video memory that I can. I find that this runs my machines a lot smoother. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And now we'll spin it up. So from here, you could go ahead and use your keyboard and select try or install Ubuntu.
So now we can go through the process of installing Ubuntu on the virtual machine. So go ahead and follow the prompts. Here we'll choose our language. I will leave that on default as English, but if you're a different language speaker, then you can go ahead and locate that, for example, Spanish. Click Next. Here you can select some settings. I won't be touching any of these accessibility settings, so I will be moving on. Here you can select your keyboard. I will be using English US. Here we will leave the default option selected as we're gonna be using a wired connection as this is a virtual machine that doesn't actually connect directly to the Wi-Fi. So we'll click next. And there is an update for the installer. You may select update now, but in this case I will not, so I will skip this. You can also try out Ubuntu before actually installing it. But since this is a virtual machine, I'm not worried about trying before making any changes to my computer, so I will just go ahead and, and proceed with the install. And here we'll go ahead and follow the interactive installation. You may do an automated installation if you do have a YAML file with auto install steps. And we will proceed with the default selection of apps to install on the virtual machine. In this case, we will not need to install any additional support. However, if you are installing on your physical hardware, you may need to install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. For example, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you may need some additional third-party software for it. Now we'll go ahead and leave the selected option here, erase disk and install Ubuntu. And now this is our chance to create our account. For your name, it can be anything. In this example, I will name myself example. And I'll leave my computer name as such, leave the username as such. And in the password, make sure you select something that you can remember. It doesn't necessarily need to be a smart password if you aren't planning on doing anything online. So for now, I will name this example and continue there. And then now we could select our time zone. I will leave this as default. And if everything looks good here, we could proceed to install the machine. Once the installation is complete, then we could go ahead and restart now. Or if you would like, you can continue testing. Now we can come up to devices and go to optical drives. And typically we would come in here and remove the disk from the virtual drive, but it looks like it was done automatically. So we'll not have to worry about that. So now we can come down here and click enter. So as you can see here, here's the user that we created during that installation. We'll go ahead and click on that, and then we'll log in with the password that we created. And so now we're able to, and now we are in our Ubuntu installation. We could go ahead and skip Enable Ubuntu Pro for now. And this is completely up to you. Uh, I will not be sharing my system data with Ubuntu. Click Next. And now we are finished, and Ubuntu is installed. However, there is one more step that you may decide to do. 
and that is to install guest editions. As you see, we expanded the window, but Ubuntu didn't quite expand with it. So what we'll do is we'll come up to devices and go down here and you'll see insert guest edition CD image. We'll go ahead and hit that. And you see here it's popped up here. So we'll click on that and then we'll come over to autorun.sh and we'll right click on that and run it as a program. And then go ahead and enter in your password and authenticate. And it seems like there's a package missing. So what we'll do is we'll install bzip2. So we can go ahead and hit return, close that out, and we'll want to locate the terminal. From here, we could do a sudo apt install bzip2. Go ahead and hit enter. Put in your password. All right, and now we could exit this terminal and try this again. Now we'll hit enter. And just like that, Guest Editions is working. Now if you want to go full screen with this virtual machine, you can hold down right control and push F and this will prompt this screen here. You could select do not show message again, but I like to leave it alone. Go ahead and hit switch and now it takes up the whole screen. And to get out of this, just hit right control and F again, and you will be brought back to this window. And that is it. Ubuntu is installed and fully functional.